Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Raghav Pakshi. I currently work as a business analyst with Swiggy. In this series, I'll be talking about few of the most common SQL questions that you can expect in your next interview. The question that we are going to discuss today is an easy level question, so you can expect this question in every zero to two year level interviews. So the question is, we have to find out output of all the type of joins. We'll start by solving this problem step by step and we'll also try to understand the basic concepts which are involved in the problem. You are given two tables, you have to find out output of all the type of joins. That is left join, right join, inner join and outer join. Seems easy, right? Don't worry, we'll be introducing a challenge in the later part of the video to make this question a tricky one. So we have two input tables. On the left, you can see we have table A which has five input rows and on the right we have table b which has four input rows so the first question is we have to find out the output of the left join but before jumping into the solution let's try to understand what is a left join so in left join what happens is the join results all the records of the left table and only the match records of the right table so let's try to understand this by an example so here you can see we have an input table, table A and table B and we have an output table and we have to perform left join on this. So according to the definition of the left join, all the records of table A will be reflecting in the output and only the match records of the table B. So if you can see one from the table A is going to get joined with one from the table B and we'll be getting this in the output table then the two from the output the two from the table a is going to get joined with this two from the table b and we'll be getting two and two in the output table similarly three from the table a is going to get joined by this three in the table b and we'll be getting three and three here you can see we have four and five in the left table there but there is no corresponding match here in the table b so we'll be getting four and five here in the left table in the output table, but these will be having a null corresponding to them because we didn't find any match in the table B. Seemed easy, correct? Previously in the start of the video, I, I was saying that I'll be introducing a challenge in this question and which will make this question a tricky one. So it's time to introduce that challenge. So the challenge is what if we have duplications? So here you can see we have table A and table B, but now table B is having duplicate values. So what is going to be the change in the output now? You can take a minute and think about it before jumping forward to the solution. So in this case, what is going to happen is our left table is going to explode. So let's try to understand what is an explosion. So explosion usually happens in such a scenario in which we have duplications in the join table. So here you can see we have duplications. So the this one is going to get joined with the one from the table B. Also the one here from the table A will be getting joined with the another one of the table B. So here you can see this one from the table A once joined with table B one is going to re result in this row. And again, one from the table A will also get joined with the other one in the table B and the second row will get created. So here you saw that only one row here got exploded into two rows. So this concept is called as explosion where one, one record from the base table gets exploded into multiple records post joining all the rest of the columns will remain same. This two will get joined with two of table B will be resulting in same format. Similarly for three and four, five, where we will not be having any join. So we'll be getting nulls here. So this is actually the trick here when we get duplicate values. So the table gets exploded due to which a single row gets multiplied into multiple rows. Hope you understand this concept or you can take a minute and rewind the video and try to understand this again if something is not clear to you. So the next part of the question is what is the output of a right join? So the output of the right join is going to result all the records of the right table plus only the matched records of the left table. 
So let's try to understand this using an example. So here you can see we have two tables, table A and table B, and we have to perform a right join here. So we'll be joining all the values of the right table with the right table, which is table B with table A. So the one from table B is going to get joined by this one. We'll be getting one and one in the output table. And again, this two is going to get joined with the two from table A will be getting two and two here and one from table B is going to get joined with this one of the this one of the table A and we'll be getting one and one here. Similarly, three will get joined. We'll be getting three and three here and eight here does not have any match record. So we'll be getting null here. One important thing that you should have noticed by till now is explosion only happens when there is a duplication on the joint table here you saw that we didn't had any duplication on the joint table so in this particular case the explosion did not happen we get we got all the records of the right table here without any explosion so the next part of the problem is we have to find out the output of inner join so in inner join the output is going to result only the matched columns. So let's try to understand this in Excel. So here you can see that this one from table A is going to get joined with this one from the table B. We'll be getting one and one here. One from table A is going to get joined with the other one of the table B and we'll be seeing one and one here. Similarly, two will get joined with two and three will get joined with three. We'll be getting these rows. So this is going to be the output of an inner join where we'll be only having the match records, not the unmatched one. So four, five and eight are no longer a part of the output here. So this is how an inner join works. The next part of the problem is we have to find out the output of a full outer join. Concept behind full outer join is we get both the matched columns and the unmatched columns. So let's try to understand this, how this happens. So here you can see we have two tables and we are performing a full outer join. So here the one is going to get matched with both of these one and we'll be getting ones here. Similarly, two and three will also get matched with these two and three. We'll be getting two and three here. Four and five of the table A which are not present in the table B will be getting 4 and 5 and null here and 8 which is present in the table B but the corresponding match result is not in the table is not present in the table A so here we'll be getting 8 and null here so if you see at the output the first four rows represent the matched rows and the rest three rows represent the unmatched rows so full outer join is basically a combination of all the matched rows and the unmatched rows so we'll be jumping to the last part of the solution which is a cross join in cross join what usually happens is a single row from the table a is going to get joined with all the rows from the table b so the output is going to get is going to look like one one and then this one is going to get joined with two, then again with one, then three, then eight. Simply, so I'll say this row is going to get resulted in five rows. And then this row will again get joined with all these rows. So the output is going to be five cross five, which is going to be 25 rows. There's a small task for you. If you are able to understand the output of the cross join, try writing the output of the cross join in the comments below and probably I'll validate it. Hope you were able to understand the logic behind all the type of joins, how they actually work and what if you are able to encounter duplication, so how the results are going to get changed. If you have any doubts, do write your doubts in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, do consider liking it, sharing it with your friends and subscribing to the channel. I'll be sharing more and more videos about most frequently asked SQL questions going further. Thank you.